Gonna build a mountain from a little hill. Hey guys, and thank you so much for tuning into my channel. My name is The Lady Designer, and we're here with the very first speed build video with the Southeast Asia Animal Pack. No, I'm lying actually, because I was already building this before I had the pack. Even though I did got some early access, so thank you for that front here. But I, because we didn't had any building stuff, I was like, why do I actually wait? Let me just start building already uh, a habitat for the clouded leopard. So at that point, I honestly had no idea how big the habitat would be or like what the climbing need was or anything like that. So yeah, I'm just building this one without the, still having the pack at that point. And this habitat is basically right next to the Japanese macaque habitat in Little Asia. And uh, I googled for a clouded leopard exhibit for inspiration and I right away actually found a picture of some kind, I think it was some, some 3D idea. I, I'm not really sure if this is ever being used by any zoo or anything like that, but it was an idea in 3D for a clouded leopard exhibit. So I was like, I don't know, I, I actually like this picture and I felt inspired by it and that is how it works, right? So you take the picture and you're trying to make something yourself out of it, I guess. So I actually wanna try and change my videos a little bit when it comes down to Planet Zoo. I actually wanna take more time to put into habitats, but not, not only the habitats, I also want to put more time into a little bit of the surroundings and stuff. I don't know, I just really enjoy doing it for this habitat, so that is definitely something I'm going to try and change instead of sometimes just only making a habitat and basically that's it. That can mean that I sometimes am not able to upload two speed built videos a week, even though I still try to work two weeks in advance. So I doubt that you guys will actually really notice it. Like I have some more time for myself to um, put into these habitats, but also we're playing Prehistoric Kingdom on the channel, of course. So I'm gonna try to find the right balance for both type of games, but I'm definitely not going to stop playing Planet Zoo. The aim is still to upload two speed built videos a week. I actually also still want to uh, start a new franchise series or maybe first finish the desert one and then start a new one. I'm not entirely sure yet, so that is definitely something I hope to get back to next week. But don't pay me too much on it. There are so many things I want to do at the moment, so I just uh, try to do my best at least to uh, create the content you guys are used to me making every week. So the habitat itself will be more sunken into the ground as well as the viewing gallery for the guests. So the guests will be standing inside while the habitat for the clouded leopard is on the outside. And the left part of the habitat will be more terrain with a lot of aquatic rocks and with three different height elevations. And on the right side, there will be a water section with an underwater viewing gallery and a little small waterfall integrated into the rocks. Uh, so the different height elevations on the left side will be connected with climbing poles. So the leopard is able to climb down and up from that section. But this does mean that the keeper is not able to walk down to those other levels. Uh, so yeah, the clouded leopard will only get fed on the highest level of the habitat. So I first noticed actually that I just started with adding a lot of the uh, temperate trees and shrubs that was definitely because of the inspirational picture that i got but later i realized that this may not really fit the clouded leopard so much so i actually found tropical trees and bushes more fitting for the clouded leopard so I, I did not really include it into the speed build but later on i went back and changed a few of the trees with some palm trees and i added some more tropical plants and some flowers in the habitat as well to make it all feel a little bit more tropical and I think that matches more with the clouded leopard and its biome. So as I said, when I started building this habitat, I had no idea what the size would be for the clouded leopard for the habitat and also not really like what the climbing needs are and it really needs a lot of climbing to be honest. But this habitat is actually pretty small. So I didn't really feel like squeezing in too many climbing poles, but you will see a few uh, as well as around the waterfall, but I actually doubt that the clouded leopard will be able to use those or it will be using those. Like it mostly just used the climbing trees 
uh, to, to go down to the other levels, to be completely honest. So the Cloud Elaborate also, of course, needs a little bit of shelter. So in the end, I decided to create uh, another rock layer. So basically more of like a cave above the waterfall. So there will be their shelter. There's also some hay bannings and stuff for them to chill and relax. And it's basically more of a private area because the guests cannot really look into that. But it is reachable from that side also from the Keeper Gate. So I think that's definitely useful for the Keeper as well to be close to them if needed. So as I said, like the habitat size is not big enough officially, but we're still in City Zoo. So in general, most of the habitats that we are building in City Zoo are actually smaller than they should be. So in some occasions, I, uh, dis I, I build like really big things, but that is really an exception in City Zoo. You should definitely see that more as like, they decided to uh, scrap a few habitats and then look at the AZA and see if they can make like bigger, one big habitat out of that for one specific animal. And that is, for example, what we did with the, uh, I think it's the white Bengal tiger. Was it the white? No, I think it's the white Bengal tiger that we added in Little Asia. That is one of the biggest habitats that we have at this point for city zoo but it's definitely not going to be super common because i still want to stay in that city zoo feeling with a lot of areas being just yeah a little bit smaller of course we want it to be beautiful and pretty like we're not gonna make like small little cages or anything like it's not gonna be that bad but yeah this one is not as big as it should be but it's definitely going to be a thing for like a future zoo that we're going to build that we're going to follow the real requirements in that case. But for City Zoo, City Zoo is different, okay? <laughs> so when the habitat was almost done, it was time to start working on the surroundings of the viewing gallery and the building itself. And since we are on Little Asia, we are using a lot of the limestone as well as for this building. Uh, but I, I do really want to play around with more of the red colors and the orange roofs. I think we also have those type of roofs in the game for, for the Asian theme. And play around with that a little bit more in other builds as well. Like we have one building right now which we used a lot of the red colors for, for the Bengal tiger habitat. And that is definitely something I want to do more often for different habitats because I really want to get more variation in into this whole Little Asia area. But this building is actually really close to the Japanese macaque habitat, which is in the same style. So I, I just found this better fitting in the end. There's still a lot to do with the whole surroundings. You can tell definitely at the end of this video when I show you around that there is still a lot of like filling the gaps needed and those kind of things and, and putting everything together to make it feel more as a whole. So that is definitely something I'm going to work on very soon, at least for this first area that we're building in Little Asia. So we also really wanted to do something with an archway connected to this building. Just a small little thing, but those kind of small little details, I always tend to forget. Like, as I said, like I always try to focus more on habitats and not really on the rest of the whole zoo. And that is definitely, I don't know, I s somehow just feel like I wanna change that a little bit. So yeah, I'm definitely going to put more time into all the builds that we're doing. So yeah, the, just the small little details like the archway and stuff. And then behind the archway there will be a little shop integrated in the building. Also something that I don't really do super often unless I'm really creating a restaurant. And uh, on the left side we will uh, get some more small Asian towers if you call it that way. And I think that looks just really cute to be honest. And I do have to say I didn't add too much footage of the roofing itself in this build because in all honesty it, it took quite a pretty long to do the roofing and i was rotating a lot with my camera i still have a hard time to uh, keep my camera still so yeah i can imagine that it's just also really hard but yeah just so you know that i didn't add everything in this video because else it would have been a speed build of like 35 minutes and i would just not be able to talk over it at all and i think it's just in general just too long to really put in the video for you guys to watch. I don't think many people will watch that much. <laughs> so there's a smooth a sloped path going down to the viewing gallery and uh, to add a little bit more detail, I decided to play around a little bit with some different colored rocks. So small little rocks with from different biomes. And uh, this definitely something that I saw from a picture 
when I wanted to get some more inspiration of Asian gardens. And I think in this case, this was a little bit inspired by a building I saw in Paidi Daiza. I also looked up a lot of pictures of Paidi Daiza and their Asian area because I remember that someone advised me to do so when I uh, started working on this little Asia area. So that is definitely very helpful. And I think it actually looks, looks quite cute. So I think that is definitely something that we're going to use more often throughout this little Asia area. I still have a hard time with it though. I, I really don't know. Like I have the feeling that we just don't have that many Asian shrubs and trees in this game. We, we do have them, but if I look at Asian gardens, I just never really find the same type of plants and stuff. So I don't know. I still have a hard time with that. So I, I really ended up again with like a lot of the bamboo and the round, I don't know how they're called, the topiary bush and a lot of the purple flowers like i really do love the look of it though and especially with the bamboo the combination of that but yeah i, I still struggle a little bit with trying to figure out what kind of other plans and stuff we are able to use in this case but we're also definitely uh, as i said like we still need to like fill a lot of the areas up and that is definitely going to be filled as well with like a lot of the oak trees that you can already see around this whole area but also a little bit more with the temperate trees that we have around the whole city zoo because still we are in a city zoo so not everything have to be exact like you will see in asia with like a lot of those gardens so i'm definitely going to try to get this, this nice balance with the uh, temperate biome that we have going on right now in city zoo and together with areas with these Asian gardens and stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do my best for that. It's all super new for me still, like this Asian style is not really something that I know a lot of. So yeah, I, I try to learn a lot from pictures and stuff, but still it's a hard time sometimes. <laughs> but I still hope you guys like it, obviously. Now normally I would uh, be talking, especially in the very first Beat Build video, a lot about the pack and what I feel about the pack, but obviously I already did like this overview review video about all the animals but I also feel like because we didn't really have building pieces or anything it really also stops about the thing that you can tell about the animals itself like obviously the animals are very beautiful and I'm really happy that I'm able to add all these animals in our city zoo with our little asia area i think that's really awesome other than that they're not like making me super excited or anything i don't know it's just very different for me comparison to for example how i felt like getting the south america pack or how i got like the aquatic animals for example and i definitely also feel like it's different because it's only animals and i just a creative player so i also just really enjoy getting new items getting new stuff and get inspired by that so that is also definitely different uh, for my personal perspective about the pack i guess as i said like there's nothing wrong with the animals i did really always said that i would love to see the clouded leopard coming into planet zoo so that is definitely a thing i know a lot of people are really excited about the sun bear or all the other animals the proboscis monkey malaysian tapir babarusa binturong usury doll uh, and the uh, and the giant malaysian leaf insect not to forget uh but yeah for me there was not really anything else on the list except for the cloud leopard that that i was like yeah that would be uh, awesome to see in the game but still it's not like that game changing element for me like the game changing element i would love to see with for example an aquarium pack or with an aviaries pack i i do hope that that is still going to be a thing i can also kind of imagine that that is something that they are either planning to release like once a year just like we had the aquatic pack in december maybe next december there will be an aquarium pack or an aviaries pack in the december after that but i if i be honest i don't really see more packs coming into 2022 for some reason i feel like this may be the last year with dlcs for planet zoo but it could potentially still be the next year or half of the next year so like for example we still would see a pack in march april 2022 and then later on we would see a pack in june july for example i'm not really sure if they will be able to make dlc still for 2022 
Uh, so that is definitely going to be a thing. On the other hand, there were rumors, I guess, that Frontier wanted to add around 200 animals into the game. But in that speed, that's still gonna take a few packs. So I'm not, I have no idea if those rumors are true, to be honest. I, I, it's only something I've heard. I didn't read it anywhere or, or heard it from someone officially from Frontier. So I honestly have no idea if that is going to be the case. But yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happy to see more animals being added in Planet Zoo. But I guess in this case, there's just nothing really special about these animals that are making me super excited. Other than that the animals are looking obviously super duper beautiful as always. And so I'm even a little bit scary just like the proboscis monkey. <laughs> It's definitely a monkey that, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a very odd monkey. And uh, as I already mentioned in a few videos, I never heard of these. Well, I knew the animal, but I never really had a close look at it. I never really saw it in real life. So I, when I saw it in the game moving around, I was like, oh my god, I really don't know what to think of you. You're not like that pretty or something. I, it's really the nose. It's really the nose that's making it odd. Maybe it's 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 just because it gets more close to you. No, no, I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys feel the same as I feel about the Proposcus monkey? I don't know. They're fascinating. They're fascinating animals, just like any other animal, of course. Just like the Babarusa as well, the Babarusa is also definitely something. <laughs> it's a really cool animal, but the Warthog is definitely still my favorite pig in the game, so don't get me wrong. Uh, but they're just special animals, I guess. Uh, I think that's also a really cool thing, obviously, to get these more, more special animals into the game. But yeah, end of the story. I just really wanted to see some more game-changing animants, or at least like more animals diving and being updated into the pack. Just like the Garial, I, I in all honesty think that the Garial just has the saltwater crocodile or the um, caiman animation. So I honestly don't really see anything new or spectacular on that. And I just really was hoping that at least by now there would be more animals diving into the game. And especially for example, the polar bear, that is definitely an animal that I really would love to see diving in the game. but. It's just very unfortunate that there, I think there was no time or maybe they're working on it behind the scenes still and they want to make sure that all the animals are finished before they're going to update it and, and do it in one go. That could definitely be. Like I myself had the assumption that they would be updating the animals maybe by patches like five animals now and then five animals or something like that. And they would do like updates in between uh, but yeah, I guess that was just a wrong assumption of me and, and of uh, other people as well. So <laughs> I guess we just have to be patient and wait and see. But the unfortunate thing is like right now, Pontisu is really um, on hold because I just really want to see more diving animals. And I don't really feel like any animal of this Southeast Asia animal pack is really fitting into Pontisu. So yeah, as of right now, I don't really uh, see Pontisu continue at this point and we're going to keep working on the safari boat ride which is basically almost finished so I think only a few weeks and that zoo will be completely finished and then maybe we can start a new tropical Asia zoo or something like that but then obviously maybe more in the range of Malin zoo or like Kowali zoo and definitely not that much into the style of what we're doing right now with City Zoo, obviously. But anyways, without further talking, we're here at the end of the speed build. Uh, it, it, even though I did cut out a lot of footage because else it will be way too long to talk over. Uh, but yeah, without further talking, let's just go to City Zoo, to Little Asia, and let me show you guys around. So quickly, to give a little idea, we start here with one of the entrances. There's another one on the left side of uh, this whole area. But just to give a little idea of where everything is uh, placed at this point, we have the beautiful uh, orangutan habitat right over here on this side. I'm going to keep it paused for the most time, uh, especially when moving around. <laughs> we have the Japanese macaque habitat right over here. And this one is definitely, um, as you can tell, there's a lot of work still uh, that we have to do we have to do a lot of uh, nice gardening and stuff and as well as uh, this area we started off with some kind of 
little uh, water section, a little pond right over here, but this one is also not finished yet. And we have the Chinese pangolin right over here. And this is a work in progress area uh, still. I'm not entirely sure if we're going to keep that building at all, to be completely honest. Uh, but yeah, there still has to be a lot of stuff to do. And we have the orangutan on this side. And then if we move right over here, we have the white Bengal tiger habitat. Now this one is obviously nice to uh, unpause for just a little second. I'm not really sure if the white Bengal tiger is in here because I remember Pearl, that is what I called her. She was still a little baby, um, but I, I'm not sure if I put her back in the training center before she grew up <laughs> so I could enjoy her being a baby still. Uh, so let's go down here and show you because this is the area for the, um, the cloud leopard. <laughs> Uh, so when we walk right over here, again, there's a lot still empty that we need to fill in. But right over here, you can't really tell. It looks actually quite cute. And uh, I tried to add a little bit more detail into the walls and stuff. Not too much, but just a little bit to, uh, to break uh, the white a little bit off. Let's first go here to this little, um, I think, Street Fox Coffee it is. So a little shop. We have some lanterns right over here of the uh, Asian theme and uh, these uh, these ones are really cute actually I'm gonna use those a lot more often in this area so we have a little shop right over here and this archway just I don't know it just breaks the area a little bit so I do really love that and then if we go right over here we go back and then we can go down right over here and I really like these these small little I actually wish they were a little bit smaller but yeah, it is what it is, I guess. I know that we had in Planet Coaster, we had like smaller rocks that worked way better for these kind of edges of your paths. Uh, so right over here, we have the Clouded Leopard habitat. So this one, I'm curious, like it, it can reach it, but it has not been swimming yet. I know they swim in my Safari Boat Ride video that I made with all the animals. So they do swim, but I just have not seen, uh, seen any swim right over here. And we did, I totally forgot to talk about that, but we did uh, change the color of the water right over here. So it's not the original water. I don't know if I can show the original water. I just tried to play around a little bit with that uh, because I don't know, it's just really cool. So this is the original watercolor, which is actually quite bright. And this is the, um, the watercolor I use. Actually, if you see it right after each other, you're like, hmm, not entirely sure if this is the best uh, water section, uh, watercolor to use. But still, it feels a little bit more natural, but maybe it should be a little bit less bright. Uh, but I do really like the, the waterfall, and as I said, like these climbing frames and stuff. They, they, some can be, this one can't be used, I think, with it being connected to the water. But this one can be used, so they could potentially go from the top to, to down right over here. Is that one... Is he playing with the, with the box or something? It sounded like that. Let me just change the lighting just a little bit, because you know me and my lighting. There's not that much lighting, so we have to live with the fact that we have right now. Look at you! Hi, cutie. They're really pretty. Oh. They are really, really pretty. I'm not really sure if I put two in the habitat already, or maybe only just one. But yeah, definitely the difference. I still have a few ash trees and some apple trees that I started with. But definitely with the um, um, palm trees and stuff, it definitely looks way more tropical already. Yeah, I do really like that. Also with these tropical plants. Right over here on the rocks, I do add it. Uh, I added one more right over here as well. Yeah, I do really like this habitat. It's definitely different from all the things that we have done, and I honestly do enjoy more of like the heavy, detailed, smaller habitats in comparison to like the bigger, wider habitats where the animals just need a lot of space to roam around. Like for example, like the elephant habitat is like completely different from this, but I really love doing these uh, small detailed habitats in this game. Let me just show you from um, some other angles. Not that I did do too much of detailing on the building, like obviously you don't really have to, 
But just to give you an idea of, like, they still have quite a lot of space right over here to walk around, to be honest. You can't connect this because else they will climb out of the habitat. So I had to uh, put it on this height and leave it open right over here. So right over here, they have their, uh, their little shelter area right above the waterfall and they can uh, look down. I should actually make this one-sided glass, but that's just a small little detail. So they, they can climb down right over here if they want to. And also the keeper is actually pretty decently able to uh, look into the habitat to see where the clouded leopard uh, would be located at that point. But yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my god, they're, they're actually jumping down. That's insane. Um, but yeah, obviously the keeper cannot go down, so it, it can be a, quite a struggle. Well, maybe they just use a ladder or something if they uh, would need the cloud of leopard to, to tranquilize or anything like that. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but yeah, I'm happy with this habitat. I surely am. I think it looks great together with the uh, outside of the habitat. But obviously, do let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of this cloud leopard habitat with waterfall and underwater viewing and let me know what you guys think so far of the southeast asia animal pack of course i'm super excited to hear what now we have seen all the animals what is your favorite animal of the pack and why and uh, yeah leave a like at the video if you guys enjoyed of course subscribe of course if you haven't already and if you want to support the channel a little extra you may want to consider to become a fave fan member with the join button of youtube or via patreon with the link down in the description you can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and all those other social media pages. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I really hope to see you guys all in the next one. Bye guys!